President of the United States. Admiral, Captain, gentlemen, I want to express on behalf of the members of the Congress, the ambassadors from many countries, on behalf of myself, I think the people of the United States, uh, great appreciation to you, both of your efforts today, your efforts on other days and nights, in the spring and in winter and in summer. The United States Navy helps secure the freedom of countries uh, thousands of miles away, ships which uh, sail hundreds of miles from coast to far off places, preserve the freedom of those countries. And therefore, as a former member of the United States Navy, and now as president, I want to express to you our heartfelt appreciation I hope you realize the contribution that you're making, not only to the preservation of the peace, but the preservation of the freedom of this country and the over 50 countries which are allied with us and others which, while not allied, benefit from our strength. What you have shown us today, the ships, the techniques, and most of all, your own skill and courage, makes all of us return to the capital with a good deal more confidence and hope. Navy lieutenant arrives at Oceana, Virginia to visit the Atlantic fleet. Only now he comes not as a naval officer, but as the 35th President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. The President's party first visits headquarters of the Supreme Allied Commander, Atlantic, Admiral Robert L. Dennison. Here, President Kennedy meets officers of the NATO nations who share in the security of the vital Atlantic Sea frontiers. On this, his first official visit to the fleet, President Kennedy is accompanied by the Vice President, Lyndon Johnson. Over the next 24 hours, the presidential party, members of Congress, and ambassadors and diplomatic guests from 56 nations will witness at sea and ashore the operations of the men, ships, and planes of the Navy. The nerve center of the Atlantic NATO Command is Operations Control Center. Here, in the event of war, would come the orders sending into action the seagoing forces of 14 nations as one Navy. One such ship would be the Thomas A. Edison, newest of the Polaris submarines. In Norfolk, the Edison waits the President's arrival. this submarine will join the Polaris fleet already deployed on patrol. Armed with 16 Polaris missiles, she will add substantially to the free world's ability to deter war and prevent aggression. 
While President Kennedy scans the harbor through one of Edison's periscopes, Vice President Johnson arrives aboard the attack carrier Forrestal. Cruiser Northampton, a flagship of the Atlantic Fleet, mans the rail for the Commander-in-Chief. In an emergency, Northampton could serve as the President's mobile command post at sea one of several nerve centers from which he and his staff could transmit command decisions. Third thing I would like to A briefing is in the ready room. It's good today. If for some reason we had to divert to the beach, there are plenty of alternate fields along the coast that you can get into. We're operating just south of Cherry Point here. We have a master jet base here, Cherry Point. Uh, Hunter Air Force Base here at Savannah has runways that can take the vigilante. Are there any questions from anyone? Pilots and air crewmen have an opportunity to be ambassadors themselves. They've visited many nations, but seldom has there been the opportunity to reciprocate at sea. The uh, Chargé d'Affaires of the Republic of Mali. Yeah, yes. Of Western Africa. Of Western Africa, yes. Oh. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am the ambassador of Honduras. Oh, si. Tengo mucho gusto. Tengo mucho gusto. Gracias, I just speak Spanish. Un poquito. <laughs> This is my bombardier, Lieutenant Hello, oh, my name is uh, Mr. Davila. I am from Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras. Very I am representing my country, your great country, United States. It's my pleasure to meet you, sir. Yes. Senator Byrd, I'm Commander Heath. It's a pleasure to know you, sir. Honor to have you aboard. This is my bombardier, Lieutenant Larry Monroe. Pleased to meet you, sir. Is this, uh, is this your first visit with us aboard the Enterprise? Yeah, first, first time aboard the Enterprise. I'm very proud of the fact it was built in Virginia. I'm one of those that believes in airplane carriers. Well, of course, I'm very glad to hear you say that, sir. Breakfast, a good chance to meet constituents. and ceremonies by the fleet. Nowadays, fleets are widely dispersed across thousands of miles of ocean. This is a rare sight. Among ships saluting the president, the largest in the world, the Enterprise. Sleek destroyers. Guided missile destroyers, frigates, cruisers and the first nuclear-powered surface ship, the USS Long Beach, amphibious assault ships, and their Marines. Proud, dedicated men, proud ships, an answer to the President's question.
piped aboard the Big E, 